you remember when uTorrent was the cool kid on the block, the go-to place for downloading everything from movies to games? It was the Spotify of torrenting, briefly owned by the actual Spotify in its early days. But fast forward to today, and uTorrent seems to be facing more ups and downs than a roller coaster. From its glory days, with a whopping 150 million users to steering the rough waters of declining interest, uTorrent's journey is more dramatic than a Netflix series. What happened to this once torrenting powerhouse, and can it make a comeback? Let's go back to 2005, when a Swedish genius named Ludwig Strigius decided he'd had enough of the clunky torrent clients cluttering up the digital space. Ludwig wasn't looking for fame or fortune, he just wanted a torrent client that didn't feel like waiting for dial-up internet. So, in between Swedish Fika breaks and dodging IKEA furniture, Ludwig set out on a quest to create the unsung hero of file sharing. Facing more false starts than a caffeinated rabbit, Ludwig tackled the on-again, off-again development of what would become uTorrent. After a month of coding, he'd lose interest faster than a cat spotting a laser pointer and would shelve the project for nearly a year. But persistence paid off. And in September 2005, he powered through three days of intense coding, birthing uTorrent into the digital universe. Now, if you look closer at uTorrent's logo, that funky first letter isn't a U, but a Greek letter called EMU. It's not some pretentious design choice, but it's Ludwig saying, hey, I made this and it's micro-sized but mighty. And with that, uTorrent hit the web, ready to revolutionize torrenting one micro-sized byte at a time. Now, did you know that uTorrent once had a backstage pass to the music industry, courtesy of Spotify? In its early days, Spotify decided to play matchmaker and acquired uTorrent. The connection wasn't just a casual encounter. It ran deep into the veins of Spotify's peer-to-peer -peer distribution system. Ludwig Strigius found himself not just creating a torrent client, but inadvertently becoming a rock star in Spotify. However, the love affair was short-lived. As soon as Spotify convinced Ludwig to stay and dance to their tunes, they quietly sold uTorrent to BitTorrent behind the scenes. The impact of this ownership shuffle was like a sudden change in the playlist. uTorrent's trajectory was altered, and it had to find its rhythm in a new dance with BitTorrent. So, what happened now? uTorrent found itself in the capable hands of Bram Cohen, the guy behind the world's first peer-to-peer -peer BitTorrent based file sharing program. It was like passing the torch from one torrent legend to another, and uTorrent was about to level up. uTorrent, under Cohen's command, wasn't just any torrent client. It was the speedster of the torrenting world, zipping through downloads faster than your morning coffee kick. Efficiency became its middle name, shedding the bloatware that weighed down its competitors. And if user-friendly interfaces were a currency, uTorrent was rich. But with great power came the responsibility to deal with copyright concerns. In a deal with the Motion Picture Association of America, or MPAA, uTorrent agreed to shed its copyrighted material, which stirred the torrenting community. But despite the hurdles, uTorrent's growth was meteoric, boasting over 28 million active users by 2008. What about its finances? uTorrent found itself facing financial headwinds, heavily relying on the generosity of investors. The struggle was real, and to keep the digital ship afloat, uTorrent had to get creative. In came optional toolbars and a Google-powered torrent search, not just to enhance user experience, but to generate some much-needed cash flow. These were cosmetic changes and strategic moves to inject life into uTorrent's finances. The numbers speak volumes, with estimated revenues ranging between $15 to $20 million per year, uTorrent was hustling to sustain itself in a digital landscape that was evolving faster than a Twitter feed during a breaking news event. But then, the 2008 financial recession happened. BitTorrent, uTorrent's parent company, felt the squeeze, leading to layoffs and business closures. That's when everything went downward. uTorrent then faced a massive shift in user behavior as legal and pocket-friendly content distribution options started knocking on the digital door. The rise of platforms like Spotify and Netflix disrupted the torrenting landscape, offering users a legitimate and cost-effective way to consume content. 
Spotify and Netflix played pivotal roles in diminishing the appeal of torrenting. Users embraced legal alternatives, leaving the torrenting scene less crowded than a Monday morning coffee shop. The closure of major piracy sites, including heavyweights like Megaplode and the Pirate Bay, marked a turning point. The digital high seas were being patrolled more rigorously, making the torrents less enticing for many users. It was like dismantling pirate ships. The free content treasure was getting harder to find, and if we had a graphical representation of the decline in interest in downloading free movies, it would resemble a nosedive. <laughs> the numbers don't lie, and the chart painted a picture of waning enthusiasm for the once thriving world of free movie downloads. But if you think its problems ended there, you're wrong. In 2012, uTorrent introduced ads to the free version. However, the shift didn't stop there. uTorrent rolled out a pro tier in 2012, asking users to pay $20 a year for an ad-free experience. The decision had a ripple effect, leaving the free version less appealing. The community found itself at a crossroads. Tolerance levels were tested as uTorrent made these necessary changes for its business survival. Users had to grapple with the trade-off between free and premium. Fast forward to 2015, and uTorrent pulled a controversial move straight out of a spy thriller. They secretly install a cryptocurrency miner on users' computers. It wasn't just bloatware, it was a covert operation that left users feeling blindsided. The uproar was real, and uTorrent was at the epicenter of a storm fueled by privacy concerns. So what now? Beyond uTorrent's control, external factors played puppeteer in its decline. The changing landscape, marked by the rise of legal content platforms and the crackdown on piracy sites, cast a looming shadow over uTorrent's once vibrant user base. As user behavior shifted, alternatives like Qubit Torrent stepped into the torrenting space, providing a new home for those seeking refuge from uTorrent's turbulent journey. The community started exploring other options, much like a group of friends searching for a new hangout spot. BitTorrent didn't escape unharmed either. Service shutdowns became a recurring theme, and the uncertainty surrounding uTorrent's future added an air of unpredictability to the torrenting landscape. Now, are you curious about the current financial heartbeat of uTorrent? Well, it's kind of like trying to find a needle in a haystack. The lack of public financial information about uTorrent's current state leaves us in a digital fog to decipher its financial viability. Speculation swirls around whether uTorrent is treading water at break-even, or perhaps savoring a slice of profitability. The financial curtain is drawn, leaving us to wonder if uTorrent is holding its cards close to its digital chest. Reflecting on the glory days of uTorrent feels akin to reminiscing about a bygone era. The once mighty force in the torrenting realm now stands as a relic of its former self, like a retired superhero contemplating the good old days. And let's not forget the comrades in the torrenting journey. Platforms like the Pirate Bay also went through the motions of rise and fall. So what do you think is next for uTorrent, and can it reclaim its former glory?